What is up guys, Technicals here. We're back with episode two in our adventure into CPU mining. This thing will be the death of me. So today we wanted to explore cooling if you followed over on episode one. Uh, we had some kind of high temperatures, but not really high for the Ryzen CPU that we're using. But I wanted to mechanically bring the temperatures down as low as I possibly could. So I went and got this, a AIO, a big boy, uh, to pop in there in place of the air cooler that we had. Ran into lots of hardware issues, and honestly, I'm gonna be upfront, we didn't get as far as we wanted. Some results posted at the end of the video, just to be upfront, watch the video though, I need the watch time. But just to prepare you for it, it's mostly a troubleshooting video, me trying to work through the process of finding out what the hell was wrong with this thing. We did sort of figure it out at the end, uh, so we're back, and hopefully in episode three, we can get some more results for the 7950X3D, which I know a lot of people are kind of curious about because there doesn't seem to be a whole, whole lot of uh, available hash rate info for people mining on this processor because I guess it's just too expensive and people just opt to go with the 7900 um, or just the 7950X and not the 3D. But I tried to be funny throughout the video so it gives you something interesting to watch. Uh, so appreciate you guys taking a look at this and let's get into this process. On the technicals, let's get into it. The technicals. So we just took off the air cooler off our 7950X3D. We're getting some high temperatures. It weren't too high because everything I've gathered thus far is that these processors can handle it, but I wanna make sure I can get the absolute lowest temperatures possible. So I got the big beefy. It's a 480 millimeter rad uh, for the AM5 socket. I mean, you can kind of tell this thing is, uh, that's a huge bitch. So what we're gonna do is mount this up. Uh, we've got some baseline temperature readings that we kept in a handy dandy Excel spreadsheet uh, for uh, three different algorithms that we ran on. We were tinkering around with the uh, precision boost control in the BIOS, uh, but probably once we get this on, we're gonna reset everything back to default because we were getting some crashes um, on Random X. I'm not sure why, because I reverted everything back, at least I thought I did. Uh, so we're gonna reset that to default. Uh, pop this bad boy on and start fresh and then once we know and are confident that we've done everything we can mechanically to get the absolute lowest temperatures then we'll start tinkering i know a lot of people don't like aios for this application i've heard some people don't because uh you can get thermal runaway if it's undersized because the thermal load on these things is so high it just gets trapped and nowhere to go but i am super ultra confident there is no way possible that a rad this a triple rad a 480 uh, is going to have any issue offloading the heat out of this thing from this little processor. Um, if that's the case, then I'll, I'll eat crow pie, I guess. Uh, but I'm confident in this thing. Let's pop it on and see what we can do. So I'm testing this out. The tubes are gonna come up a little bit short to make it uh, to the CPU. I don't wanna put undue stress. Also, that puts the pump kinda at the same height or higher and the tubes higher, so that's not really gonna work out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this rad plate that sits on the back and I'm just gonna move it up um, onto these higher brackets here. That way the radiator can sit there. I'm going to remove the fans so the hoses come through the plate instead of out and around. Uh, that flips it around, that puts the rad at the highest point and I have plenty of tube length to make it. Um, structural stability concerns not too worried I'm gonna tighten down these uh, these pins that hold it on and I'll probably just run a zip uh, for the uh, you know the IO panel thing here where you know your GPU would go I'm just gonna zip that in as far as the IO panel here the stuff that plugs in there should be plenty of clearance because the rads on the outside I'll just plug the things in and route them down through here and that also allows me to move my PSU back up to the uh, the interior portion of the wet bench because I don't really like it down here. I kind of like having the clearance down there. Just prefer to have it in there. So let's do that and see if it works out. Uh, fuck. So 
So not to be that guy that rushes to blame the hardware for their lack of knowledge on a certain topic, but I'm thinking this gigabyte board is kind of bunk. Getting the red LED light, the warning for the DRAM, looking at forums online, it seems like a healthy amount of people seem to have this issue. System kicks on, it's pulling 40 watts, but you know, all I did was swap the cooler. So I unseated the cooler and kind of put it back down to make sure I wasn't over tightened and shortened something on the board. But I'm thinking what it was is the XMP profile was still on and maybe causing an issue. I don't know. My knowledge is completely absent in this realm. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap, I'm going to return this board. Uh, I'm going to swap it out for an Asus. It seems like there's a little bit better of a, a uh, little better quality, maybe more reliable. Hoping it's the hardware issue and not some sort of configuration thing. Because uh, I tried, you'll you'll probably notice I've got well technicals. You've got both your your dims in A1 and A2. You can't do that. I know I had them in the correct slots, and the forums online suggested that I move them around into different configurations: one stick, two stick, A2, B2, one, two, three, four, uh, red fish, blue fish. None of it seemed to work. Nothing was happening. Disconnected everything. Brought it down. Nothing. Nothing was working. So cleared the CMOS, of course. Um, nothing was working. So I don't I don't want to think that installing a new cooler is gonna be an issue there. And you'll notice I took the header off the CPU header for the cooler and put it on a pump header and then disconnected a separate fan to the CPU header to make sure it would turn on. Nothing, nothing at all. So um, thinking maybe it's the board, you know, um, just gonna swap it out for an Asus and see if we have some better results there. Just pop the cooler off and maybe you guys can see something and I can't, but it looks like the paste job was okay. I mean, Maybe a little too thick up there, but you know you can read the writing through there. I think it was good contact, and I'm not seeing really any like signs that the cooler was nicking on something or hitting something else or pinching. So anyway, I'm gonna blame it on the board, swap it out for a new one, maybe go with an MSI versus an Asus, depending on what I can get fastest. All right, so we went ahead and ripped that out, sent that off on its merry way back to Mr. Amazon. Uh, enjoy it, Jeff. Anyway, we went out to the most reasonably reasonably priced retailer that we know of best buy because they had these this msi b650 tomahawk mag tomahawk wi-fi a little cruise missile there because we love the military industrial complex let's pop this in and get back to where we started do a little magic trick like this like the... all right so there it is got the new motherboard in place got the cooler on here got everything connected Let's turn it on and see if it actually works. All right, so this thing is turning out to be nothing but a nightmare. Yellow DRAM light, error light on the motherboard. Red CPU light, same exact problem that was on the previous motherboard. So obviously the problem's in the RAM or the CPU. Um, I read somewhere that maybe over tensioning the cooler could cause a problem with the processor. So my next step is to, because the RAM's seated fine and I let it sit for a while for maybe it would figure it out. Uh, my next step is to put the old cooler back on because i tried a different power supply didn't work i'm gonna put the old cooler back on and if that works then i am going to blow my all right i think for shits and giggles i'm gonna try to power it on with no cooler whatsoever so powering it on with no cooler uh the red led uh warning light for the cpu went off uh, but the system turned off after about 30 seconds i assume from thermal throttling i changed the offset because i had it on the offset uh version of the uh, the brackets which move the cold plate down a little bit because the hot spot on the processor is on the lower half I'm gonna try it with this like super loose no pressure on it whatsoever if that doesn't work i'll put the old cooler back on maybe that'll work all right so this is being held on virtually by nothing um it is loose you can lift it up even a little bit it's just really just held in place by gravity i'm going to check my brackets to make sure that i don't have something flipped upside down and it's just applying an undue amount of pressure but really when i put these on it was just not even finger tight like as soon as my fingers met resistance i stopped around this board for the cmos jumper because the red led went off and i want to try one more time i just want to clear the cmos to see if that resets the ram um because i'm without knowing shit about ram it the settings should not have been saved in any way shape or it should not have carried over to ram i mean ram is volatile so i um, just going to clear the CMOS. I think this should do it. I don't see the jumper on the board. I just short the terminals on where the battery goes. That should achieve the desired effect. Usually it's like a little two-pin header somewhere. I'm just not seeing. If you guys see it, say something. You got, and no one sees anything? Okay. 
a lot of help you guys are. All right, so battery back in. And just to, to demonstrate, like this thing is super duper loose and that's how loose it has to be for the red CPU light to go off. So there, I'll show you what it looks like. So power on, there it kicks, red CPU light. Should go off, no. All right, we're back to square one. So maybe there's something shorting around here. Um, I mean, I checked everything. There's, everything's got plenty of clearance. There's nothing on the board. The standoffs are between the screws. My own. Single stick of RAM, got it to go into BIOS. So I'm updating the BIOS to the most recent version and hopefully I can add two sticks and get back to work. And welcome, it's the year 3000 and we finally got this fucking thing working. As it turns out, bad stick of RAM. In my whole career, never did I have a, a, a RAM go bad at all, ever, uh, but this seems to be the case. How I found out, I, I have no idea. I was just trying every single combination of everything I could because these came as a, a mated pair. Uh, so I took one out, swapped it, and left it in slot one. The lights went off, booted up just fine. So updated the BIOS, we're hashing, we're in, we're in Hive, so that's a good thing. Uh, we're gonna check the temperatures, but we're gonna do a quick and dirty RMA on this. Uh, the replacements get here in the morning. So we'll pop both back in there. Then we can start screwing around with the X and P profiles. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let this run uh, on the single stick. We're gonna see what kind of hash rates we get on random X and maybe an, another one. Uh, check to see if it's stable, uh, but really revisit the purpose of this video, uh, which was the cooler to see if we could get those temperatures down to the lowest possible before starting to mess with those settings. So I understand this video didn't really get a whole a whole long ways, but this is a multi-part series in my adventure into CPU mining. And just as a, uh, you know, it's coming up now where we threw it over on nice hash on random X, just to get a sense of what our temperatures are gonna be, our overall hash rate is significantly lower because we were pulling about 20, 21 before, uh, but with the single stick of RAM, that's coming down. But the good news, is that our temperatures are significantly lower, 62. So at, at least uh, 10, 12 degrees less. Um, so I'm gonna leave it mining on this and you know, through the as I start to edit this video down, I'll keep an eye on it. If it jumps up and we start to see a thermal runaway effect, uh, you know, we're gonna keep an eye out for that, but uh, very promising initial results. So that was a real doozy going through that it took up the entire day trying to uh, troubleshoot and figure this out. But I'm glad that we got somewhere with it and we've kind of identified that the RAM was indeed the culprit. So as when the new RAM comes in, we'll pop that in there and see if we can get back up to those hash rates that we were at previously with the lower temperatures that this AIO is providing. So as of right now, we're still sitting at 62C, which is exactly where we were about 34 minutes ago. So I don't think thermal runaway is gonna be much of a thing on here, even when we pop in the, uh, the replacement set of RAM and we're hashing at the full rate. Um, so that's ideal. That's exactly what I was going for. So again, the AIO is kind of a, you know, unnecessary cost. If you're doing undervolting, if you're doing, you know, all the proper things to bring the temperature down software wise, but again, I like the mechanical portion. So, uh, we're going to do that as well to see if we can get the temperatures even lower or we can achieve a higher hash rate or just to, uh, to max out the efficiency of this 7950X3D. So if you're knowledgeable in CPU mining, let me know in the comments below, what did I do wrong? How did the RAM go bad? Is it just uh, bad luck? Was it something I did? If you think you know the reason, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow all the links in the description below for the products that we featured in this video. Use my Amazon affiliate link so I get some money. Otherwise, I'm the Technicals. See you next time.